Welcome to Ray Foster's Secrets to Real Estate Investing. Um, I have Amber Arnell with Trilogy Escrow. Welcome, Amber, to our show. Thank you so much for having me. So, Amber, let's talk a little bit. Um, why would you say having escrow um, is important to an investor? Well, escrow is a neutral third party. So what we do is we provide a service where we go through and we double check, like when you're purchasing a property, property we check your prelim, we make sure that the liens that are on there are applicable liens. We make sure that if there's going to be something else that shows up, um, we run title searches. We make sure that everything's the way that you need it when you purchase so that when you turn around and sell it, your investment's protected and you walk away with as much money in your pocket as you possibly can while at the same time providing your seller a service to where they walk away with their max um, out that they're able to get as well. And so everybody kind of walks away happy and then you can do what you need to do as an investor, either flip it and a wholesale or, you know, fix it up and sell it and you walk away with even more money. That's really good. Is I mean, it? How, how important is escrow to an investor that's just beginning and should they look for an invest I mean a um, escrow before finding that first deal definitely I think that you need to find people that you can trust that you can partner with um, because when you have those relationships that you build with people you're able to kind of say okay here's what I'm looking at before you even go in and buy a property you have interest you say okay this is the stuff that I need to look at can we pull a prelim can we see what's on there so that we make sure that you know there's not a whole bunch of crazy liens that pop up um, and you want to have a rapport with somebody so that you're able to trust their opinion when they tell you professionally you know you've only got two liens that you need to deal with and it's what you expect rather than just jumping in with somebody that you don't really know you don't have that rapport in that relationship to be able to know you know that they're offering you a valuable service okay um, now if an investor or a beginning investor found a deal and they found a crooked escrow what type of trouble would they get in there's so many things that can go wrong. Escrow is, like I said, we're a neutral third party, so we don't protect buyer or seller, we protect buyer and seller. So that for you as an investor, you wanna make sure that you have somebody who knows what they're doing, who has years of experience, knows what they're looking for, knows what they're looking at when they actually get it. And then if you don't have somebody like that, um, your profit margin could be zero. I mean, you could be in the negative if you have somebody that's not doing things right in your corner. So you definitely need to build a rapport with somebody and get them, get a relationship built build a so relationship. that, yeah, yeah absolutely, exactly. it's important. And this is why Amber Arnell, she's my personal, <laughs> my personal <laughs> escrow girl yeah. um, in California. So what I do, any and every transaction, even if I cannot, if I can't answer a question or I don't know something, she's the first one that I'm blowing her phone up and trying to get the answers that I don't know because as an investor I don't know everything that's out there you know right. there's certain people that pretend they know everything absolutely and those are the people would you agree or disagree they really know nothing no you're absolutely correct especially like it from what I've heard from people like real estate agents investors in the Inland Empire um, escrow around here there's not what they call escrow talent where you've got somebody that actually has the experience to know what you're doing um and so you know when you get out into orange county and you get into la county you get more experienced seasoned escrow officers out here they kind of hand the reins to just about anyone and so people have the mentality of fake it till you make it and there's a lot of not yes, really great escrow officers. I 100% agree. You know, and if you, like I said, if you have somebody that's not doing things right and you know, they're waiting until the last minute to check on a lien or you know, on your prelim or whatever, or they miss something because they're not going through it thoroughly enough, that could definitely impact your profit margin and you wanna make sure as an investor you're getting the max out of it, you know, when you close your escrow, that you absolutely can. Yeah, exactly. Or if they delay on your closing, exactly. that, that can cost you more money. Even more money, yep. And it can really damage your deal Absolutely. and your profit margin. Yep. Because what happens in two weeks if the market decides that it's going to tank a bit and then buyers back off and then you end up sitting on a property for another month, you're in another mortgage payment or you're in another, you know, however much money that you've put out for your project and everything, you've got people on payroll and all that other stuff, you're losing money when you waste time like that. So exactly. It's very exactly. important to have somebody. I, I agree with you on that, yeah. Amber. Um, now, how long have you been doing escrow? 
20 years. 20 years? You, 20 years. You've been doing that scroll before I was born. Yeah. Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Before I was born. <laughs> it's more like it. Um, yeah, 20 years. So, in that scroll, there's, and I'm old school, I still call closing statements huds right okay i'm a, I'm a dinosaur in this yep, business it's not a okay anymore, but that's okay it's, it's I the know same what you mean. thing exactly because um, i've been around forever too <laughs> so can you tell us the difference between a estimated and a final sure so an estimated closing statement is basically just that it's giving you a rough guess estimate of how much money you're either going to need to bring in to close or you're going to need to um or that you're going to come out with at the end. So it goes through and it estimates title fees, escrow fees, any kind of payoffs that you may have as a seller. Um, if there's any taxes, any liens like that, all those will show on your estimated closing statement, plus any extra cost you've got, like termites, um, your termite inspection, your home warranty if you have one, you know, your natural hazard disclosure, if you're paying any kind of closing costs, all those will show up on an estimate. And if you have a good escrow officer, they tend to put padding kind of everywhere in. Which she is. You tend to put <laughs> padding everywhere in an estimate so that you want to give your clients the max out that they're going to get and then as a buyer you know they're bringing in a little bit more money because you pad your file because you want to give them a refund back at the close of escrow my goal is to never close short so I make sure that I've got padding all over my file so that at the close of escrow I'm, I'm giving you more usually than what I told you at the beginning I was going to give you um, and then as a buyer you get a refund back at the end of it and what have you seen in this market within the last say year or so i mean right now it's kind of slowed down a bit you know you've got a lot of buyers that are kind of sitting on the fence waiting um there tends to be not so much inventory as there was before so um purchasing things has become a little bit harder um the refi market right now has been really great because the rates dropped and so when the rates dropped out refis went crazy so you know, as an escrow officer, you have to be able to adapt to your market and know your market. And so right now we're focusing a little bit more heavily on refis than we did in the past. Um, obviously, we want, you know, to bring in the resales. But if the revenue is not there that way, then you find another way to bring it in. It's like, you know, the multiple streams of income in escrow. It's the same thing. So then when we hit a short sale market, you know, you've got to find somebody who knows how to perform in a short sale and do an estimate for a short sale and all of that stuff. Because, again, you know, that can affect everything at the bottom line so you've got to make sure that you're prepared for any kind of market swing that you have okay so um as an investor mm -hmm. and our audience it's mostly beginner investors right. that really want to learn how to get in yeah. and how to deal with someone that they can trust sure now what are some of the signs that a new investor would have if they were looking for an escrow officer um, to determine what's good or bad within that escrow officer. For me, it's more about building a rapport with someone. So, you know, I would recommend that you contact escrows and have a conversation with your escrow officer. Ask questions if you don't understand things. If they're able to explain them to you easily um, and break it down for you, you know, not everybody does what I do. And so, Sometimes I can speak Spanish, escrowees or whatever, because you know, I know what I'm talking about. But you as a consumer, you don't necessarily know what I'm saying. So I need to be able to translate that to you and to break it down to you in a way that you can understand, exactly. you know, without making you feel stupid. And so exactly. I really feel like it's important to build that rapport with your escrow officer. Um, have a conversation and start there and see what you know what their volumes like what they do you know if if they're taking your phone calls and answering your texts and things like that then that's all stuff that's important as well so one of the problems that I've learned in this industry over the years that I've been in it it's we talked about it earlier everyone knows everything but no one knows nothing that's true you know they try to put this high I got a bachelor's degree what the hell is a bachelor's degree right exactly you know? and they try to use education sure. to try to manipulate you or trick you into using their service absolutely okay um now some of the things that i do as an investor is ask what i ask questions where i know the answer to to see how they answer it exactly okay um, a lot of my purchases are sub twos and land deals. Okay. Do your people know what sub twos are? 
um that's I don't really want to get into it. It gotcha. goes into our course. Sure, got it. <laughs> so don't I don't want to reveal all my secrets gotcha. just yet. Okay. Um, but whatever my niche is, mm-hmm. I ask the escrow officer, have they done it before? And then sure. I ask them certain questions um, to see to see and to hear what they have to say and if they've done it before. <laughs> so I ask them certain questions that I already know the answer to. Right. Test their um, knowledge base. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people I've learned, I mean, I've seen, they want to BS you just to get your buck. Absolutely. How dangerous is that? It's extremely dangerous. Like I said, that everything's all about, as an investor, everything's about your bottom line. So you have to protect that bottom line with everything that you have. And so you have to, again, make sure that you have a partnership with somebody to be able to be in your corner and to back you up so that you know that your bottom line is going to be protected. I mean, you know based on your past experiences that you've had with some escrows that, you know, people will tell you anything you want to hear, you get into an escrow and you lose money because of it. And it has nothing to do with anything that you've done per se. It just has something to do with the fact that these people don't know really what they're doing. What they're doing. They just Mm -hmm. want a buck from you. Exactly. And they think they'll figure it out as they go, which, you know, sometimes that can totally work. Escrow is not one of those things that's a hard and fast, you know, you go to school and you learn how to do escrow kind of a thing. You have to be on the job and you have to train being there. It's like being in a war zone. You know, you only know what it is by your experience. And so the more you do things, the more you become accustomed to how they work. I know when you and I started working together, you know, it was a little bit of a learning curve because yes, I had done subject twos and yes, I had had done investor purchases, but the way that you go about your purchases are a little bit um, different, which is, it's fine. It's just a matter of knowing on my end, how do I make that work for my file and my compliance and staying within the lines of the law while also being able to provide a service for you. Exactly. And I do have to say throughout the years that we've been dealing together, dealing with each other, it's been a pleasure. Thank um, you. I've been loyal. You've been loyal. Absolutely. And there's no other team that I would rather be on except you. I mean, yours. Thank you. Um, so just a few more questions sure. for you. Um, in escrow, do I have to handle, do I have to deal with title? Or can I leave that up to you? you or can, what would you suggest? Well, you can mainly leave it up to me, but I think that it's really important too as an investor to be involved and to know what your product is and to know you know, what your purchase is and what you're looking at. And so the more you educate yourself, the better off you're going to be because then at the end of the day, you know, if I'm tied up in a meeting or I've got you know six closings that day or whatever and I'm not available to stop and look at your prelim right that minute, you know, as an investor, you know that you've gone through this before and you've seen these things before and you know what to look for. So yes, we deal primarily with title. We make sure that your title issues are cleared, but I think it's also important for you to go ahead and educate yourself on all of that stuff as well. So if one of our viewers were to try to get in touch with you, they've never seen a prelim, right? they don't know what a prelim is, Sure. are you willing to sit down and educate them on a prelim? Yeah, absolutely. I've done classes with our real estate company before where, you know, I teach escrow 101 and kind of give you the basics of what I do and why I do what I do. Um, and then, you know, we go a little bit further into like when we do escrow 2.0, we, we go over prelims and what a prelim is and what you should be looking for. Um, you know, there are things that like to hide on prelims like hero loans or yeah. solar or things like that that if you don't know yes i've wh- pulled my hair out <laughs> right many times over yes, hero loans for sure because they hide they and, do you know this is a question that wasn't on my agenda tonight oh, but you're gonna spring it on me no it's not just kidding bad. because it, it's happened to me sure and it, and you've seen it, it happened yeah, to me many of times mm-hmm. where a hero lien is not on the first prelim, right. but it's on the final prelim. Yep. And, you know, there's a lot of investors or a lot of gurus out there mm-hmm. that teach these courses or sell their courses, but they're not telling the, um, the mentee or the student about how to read a prelim. Exactly. And even today, I see prelims come in. I think we just closed a property in, what was it, um, Ridgecrest, and it came back with several hero liens on it. Right. And that was a shocker to me. <laughs> right. You know, and what happens if you don't 
have enough spread in your deal, you can end up losing. Exactly. You end up having to come in with money and you lose money on your deal, which affects your next deal because you don't have the capital to be able to turn around and purchase another property. Exactly. So it affects everything from point A to point Z in everything that you do. And, you know, I've seen a, I've seen that happen before. Yeah, and actually, I kind of, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I love when it happens because other investors, beginners, whoever it may be, yeah. put themselves in a situation not really knowing um, how to buy real estate. They're just so anxious to get rich. They're right. so anxious to make these big profits. Right. But I've been in a, I've been in positions where other beginner investors, even some seasoned investors, mm-hmm. had hero liens and other judgments that didn't pop up. Right on the um, first prelim, mm-hmm. but it popped up on the final prelim. Right. And they're forced to sell the property after they did all this beautiful work mm-hmm. at a discounted price. Exactly. And um, I'm thankful that I've had you in my corner this far, I mean this long, because you recognize and you see these things ahead of time. Yeah. Um, you've warned me, you've saved my ass many of times. And I appreciate Don't do it, Ray. That. Don't do it. <laughs> How many times have we had that conversation? No, you saved my ass many of times, and I personally want to thank you on our podcast. Thank you. Um, but and this is why I'm starting this podcast because I do see a lot of fake programs out there that's yeah. just geared to take people money. Right. So I decided I want to bring in the professionals, the people that we need mm-hmm. as investors to actually educate and help promote, I'm gonna call you my family, promote my family um, and my new family that's to come and help us all become successful. For sure, that's what it's all about. Exactly, because if we don't know how to work together, we're not gonna, well, if you don't know how to work with someone, you're not gonna be successful. Right, exactly. You know, many times I called you and I've had bad days, Sure. you know, when I lose money, because you're going to lose money in real estate, Absolutely. guarantee you. It happens. But you have to know how to have that cushion. Sure. Because my loss of money is breaking even. Sure. Exactly. You know, if I break even, I lost money. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people, they lose money and they lose thousand. And where does it send them? Yeah, it sends them right into the poorhouse because they don't. The poorhouse. Yeah. Then and they then, have to go back to working at Walmart or wherever they were working before. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> it's true. But it's a funny story you say that. You know, people say, oh, it's impossible to become a real estate investor. It's not. You know, I started this business. Well, I'm not going to say this business, but I started being, I started, bec- I became a real estate investor with $53 in my pocket. See, that's crazy to me. And I've closed roughly how many deals in the last year or so at least 30 40 with me and that's just in california yeah exactly i know and you know people need to really know and understand the importance of escrow and Mm -hmm. that's why i have you on tonight is i need you to put yourself out there and what company are you with again? I'm with Trilogy Escrow and Rancho. And how can people get in touch with you? They can call me at 909-266-1515 or they can email me at amber at trilogyescrow.com. And I actually manage the office, so I'm kind of a big deal. Oh, you, you got the big <laughs> boss right there. <laughs> sure. And there's going to be so many fucking foreclosures and I'm going to buy them up. I'm hoping that we don't hit that again like we did, though. Well, I want to. I know you do, but... Your business will... If the, if we hit that, I guarantee you, your business will not slow down. Okay. If people are smart, you buy in a down market. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you it's just like when you go, go shopping for clothes, right? Yeah. You buy on sale, mm-hmm. right? You buy real estate on sale. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can get a $500,000 house for say 300,000 <laughs> you just made you should, 200 grand yeah you should do it that's easy so i know put some renters in there you do some type of loan you do a sub two you do a land contract yep. um 
you got or do a lease option or a lease purchase with the right to sublet. Yeah. And you put tenants in there, you do a lease option with them, and then what happens? They're paying your mortgage, they're paying your deals off, yep. and you're just waiting on the economy to come back up, and what happens? You turn around and sell it for a massive profit. You get profit. fucking rich. You don't just get rich, you get fucking rich. Yeah. And you live life. Yeah. So. We, I need to buy a house already. No, nah, you take your time, man. That's going to probably be about a year. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of um, foreclosures that's coming into play. Really? You know, um, just got to wait until things pan out. Yeah. And that's where you make the big money. And yeah. you find something that you're comfortable with that's. Yeah comfortable for you and your family yeah okay for sure you know we're recording this right oh jesus really? everything is recorded <laughs> podcast it's all about not being natural that's true that's what brings um the realness yeah because a lot of like i say a lot of people they're fake in this industry yeah tell me about it ray foster we're bringing the real ray foster is not fake at all no <laughs> <laughs> no seriously Anything, I, every business I've touched is turned into gold. Look at Foster and Foster. That's true. Second Chance Investment yep, Group. you've done well. Ray Foster, Secrets to Real Estate Investing. I know. Just taking things to a whole nother level. It's pretty crazy. So. And you found me on the internet. And I found you on the internet. <laughs> Where all the great loves start. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't tell you what I was looking up when I found her. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that in so many years. No, I'm oh kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, I had to pay the bill somehow. What? No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not. That's that's a true hustler, right? I'm just kidding. I literally started uh, I in this industry that. when I was 18. So Yeah. That industry, right? No, that that's my second this career. In, oh, okay, like, I'm okay. training for that one now so that when this shit crashes out, well, you, you know. Got, you got many investors that's going to come your way. I hope so. You're the best escrow. You're 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 um, investor friendly, absolutely, and that's what investors, new investors, they need. Yeah, for sure. How do they get in touch with you again? They call me at 909-266-1515 or you can email me at amber at trilogyescrow dot com. But what if someone's mental like me? I don't write. Oh, I don't Lord. pick up a phone. I don't dial. Okay. I search the internet or I have people. Sure. So how how would they find you on the internet? I mean, we're creating a Facebook. My office is brand new. We just mm -hmm. opened in June. So we're trying to create like an internet presence now and do things like create a Facebook page and stuff like or that. But how about they look up Amber or Nail? You can do that on Facebook or on, on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. Don't look for me on Snapchat. Oh, shit. <laughs> you might see too much on that. <laughs> but... What I like about you, you know how to think outside the box. For sure. Okay. And thinking outside the box is what all investors need. Not just beginners, but I don't care if you have 50 years experience, 100 years experience. Everyone needs someone that can think outside the box. Yeah, for sure. And I think that goes hand in hand, too, with like trusting like i said trusting your partner's opinions and what they have to say on subject matters and then knowing when to cut your losses and turn around and walk away from a deal mm -hmm. you know that's not going to benefit you it's not going to profit you you need to walk away regardless of how personally invested you feel in it you know i know that we've gotten to the point where we were almost closed in transactions and you said no it just doesn't financially make sense for me i can't do it and you walk away from it because yes. it just does not work for you so so you have to know when to do that as an investor or as an investor, I've go I go over my numbers hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times yep. before I close escrow. Yep. And there's sometimes I've went over my numbers five hundred times literally and you've told me, Ray, this is not a solid deal. Yeah, for sure. And I couldn't find it, I couldn't see it, you couldn't show me, but my gut was to listen to my escrow girl. Yeah. And I end up winning. Yeah, for because sure. I didn't lose forty thousand dollars or twenty thousand exactly. dollars, and that's because of Amber Arnell with Trilogy Escrow, <laughs> right? Um, but back to how to find you on the internet. You know, it's easy to look up 
Amber Arnell, escrow officer, escrow girl. Yep. On Facebook, Instagram. I think I'm literally the only Amber Arnell in the entire world. You are? I think I so. I thought I found like five or six of no them. No way. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> really? No. I was um, going to say, I don't think that's... So, we, we, we talked about... I'm going to call it a HUD. I don't care what sure. you guys call it nowadays. Okay. It's a HUD to me. Okay. Um, so what if you're are new, the it's different... not called a HUD. It's called a closing statement. And if you're old like me, <laughs> it's... A HUD one. A HUD one yeah. or a final HUD. Yep. Um, what's the difference between an estimated HUD and a final HUD? So your estimate is just a breakdown of your estimated figures and... There's padding all over that thing so that, you know, as a buyer, you're bringing in a little bit more money than you actually need. Um, and as a seller, you know, I, I tend to pad things a little bit so that when we shake out at the end of the deal, you end up coming out with more money than what I initially told you you were going to. Um, and it's just basically that. It's, it's to kind of give you a little snapshot of what you can expect either as a buyer or a seller in the transaction and how much money you need to bring in, how much money you're gonna get out at the end. Um, what happens is is everything until we actually close a transaction is an estimate so we don't get final numbers from title until we actually close that's including payoffs and title charges and recording fees and everything the best we have is an estimated closing statement and so once we actually close an escrow and we can balance we, we call it balancing out our file um, we balance out the transaction and we put all the final numbers in and at that point when you get your final that tells you exactly how much you're getting back both as a buyer and as a seller, um, and the numbers aren't padded any longer. They are actual fees. Um, but like I said, it's it's really hard, especially here in the state of California and in Southern California in general, because escrow is very specialized here, to give you um, an exact dollar figure before you actually close an escrow. The best we have is an estimate. So. An estimate, okay. Mm -hmm. So how can you best describe the final? Your final goes through and it gives you all the breakdown of the final payees. Like, you know, if you're paying a termite company, it'll have the name of the termite company, the actual cost of the report and any kind of clearance work that you've done. If you're doing um, a home warranty, that'll have all your final payees in it. It'll have your final number. You know, on a contract, you determine whether or not you're going to pay for a home warranty as a seller for a buyer. Um, and then you say i'm going to pay up to 500 dollars. well if you order a home warranty it comes in at 420 that's an extra 80 bucks but on my estimate i've put 500 because that's the max you've agreed to pay so then we turn around at closing and you have another 80 dollars in your bottom line so um, it just goes through and it finalizes all of your numbers um you know escrow numbers are pretty solid the only thing that we really pad in escrow side is whether or not we're going to do a wire and if we have any kind of overnight fees the rest of my fees are pretty standard and they don't they don't tend to change um title fees same thing you know we request estimates and quotes from title so that we can again give you a good snapshot of what you're looking at we don't want to pad it too much but um, recording fees are they're very difficult they vary from county to county and so with that you know and they vary also from title company to title company you know some of them charge what's called a recording service fee which is you know their their electronic recording company they'll charge for bringing down your documents and getting them recorded with the county. Some of them are 25, some of them are $14.50. So it really just depends. So we tend to put the max on there. So again, at the end of the day, we can give you back more than what we say we're going to when we give you an estimate. And I do have to admit, you've been the most diligent and lowest cost escrow that I've dealt with in many years. Um, Low cost, high value, baby. <laughs> what we like, right? right exactly. <laughs> that's what we like. Because at the end of the day, that's going to it's going to bring you repeat business. You know, exactly. as an investor, you're looking at your bottom line always. And so, if you work with a good escrow and you work with somebody that you can actually um, build a rapport with, you know, you can ask for things like a discount because you're bringing repeat business. You know, when you purchase a property, you get your discount on that. When you turn around and you sell your property, you're getting a discount on that. And I get a double escrow, and so. It benefits everybody so you know it's good for me to give a little bit so that you know at the end of the day you can make more money and i can make more money because that's yeah. really what it's about and i'm, I'm going to kind of throw you under bus a little oh, bit Lord. i hope hopefully that's okay Go but ahead. no you've actually done a double escrow not a double that's the wrong terminology but i've purchased a property and turned around and flipped it yep. and i came to you honest hey amber my funds are short sure I can't pay high escrow fees. 
and you waived all the costs for me on one side. Yep. I mean, that if that's not a good escrow girl, yeah. I don't know what a good escrow person is. Well, because at the end of the day, too, like I said, it's about repeat business. You know, exactly. you want your clients to want to come back to, to work with you. You know, when you build that rapport with somebody, they trust you and they know that they can come to you and ask you for things like that. You know, especially if you're not doing it all the time. I know you're bringing me all the deals that you can. So at the end of the day, I'm going to make more money because I waived an escrow fee that may put me out $1,500 or whatever. But my bottom line in the long run is going to be so much higher because I waived that $1,500 than if I was to say, no, forget you, I'm gonna go ahead and charge my fee. You turn around, you take your stuff down the street and find yeah. another escrow officer. But, and that's the thing today, most, well, I'm not gonna say most, a lot, a lot of escrow people rather charge when they know their investor is in a tight deal. Yeah, I just don't think that's right. Why, what What? What makes you different than anybody else? I mean, I think for me, it's my experience that totally does really good things for me in this industry. I mean, it's, de it's definitely given me a really good reputation. Mm -hmm. um, people know that they can trust what I say. And um, my experience, I I'm one of those people that I like to learn. And so coming into this industry, you know, I didn't know anything and I started from the bottom and I've worked my way up to where I'm running my own office at this point. And, you know, it's all about the experience and what you're willing to learn as an escrow officer. And so um, and again, with the give and take, you know, that definitely it, it builds relationships. And when you have relationships with people, you have return customers. And that's what you ultimately want is somebody to want to come back to work with you. So I'm going to ask you an honest and serious question. Sure. How do you deal with the stress? I mean, I know dealing with someone like myself, I know when, when money's involved right. and I'm really tight and I'm stressed, I'm a complete asshole. But You said it, not me. <laughs> I'm being honest. That's what Ray Foster's Secrets to Real Estate is about, right. is bringing the truth and exposing the secrets to real estate investing. For sure. Knowing all aspects and all sides of the business. Right. So how do you do it? I mean, I've called you and I'm not going to say cussed you out, but damn, damn near. near. <laughs> <laughs> and you kept a straight face. Sure, of course. And you actually called me an hour later and asked me, have you calmed your ass down? Yeah. Can we have a decent conversation? Because we've built that rapport with each other. So I know when you're being an ass, it's because you have other things going on and it necessarily might not have anything to do with me. And so I let you say what you need to say and do what you need to do and then because I know you well enough, I can call you and <laughs> say things like, have you calmed your ass down? Exactly. Can we have a conversation? You're still going to be an asshole, you know? And so um, it's very, I think that that stuff is really important, you but, know, but managing stress is, um, how honest of an answer do you want? <laughs> no, I want an honest answer. I mean, I drink a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, you have to kind of have a thick skin in this mm -hmm. industry. And so, um, I tend to take things personal because I really like my clients and I like working with people and I like when people like me. Um, but I've also learned over the years that sometimes, you know, even when you're friends with people, you fight with them. And so you have to give them the opportunity to walk away and to cool off and you need to cool off and then you can come back together and say, hey, here's where my issues are. You know, the other person has the opportunity to say where their issues are. If you can work on them and work together on them, then that's great. Then you guys can move forward in your business relationship. But it all comes down to having a personal relationship with somebody as well. But you say you take things personal, but I've never seen you take the disputes that we've had personal. Well, okay. I know on your end you have. Well, I've okay. never, because you always call me back or you yeah. find some way or I find some way to say, I'm sorry. Sure. Or, Ray, are you ready to talk sensibly and get this damn deal closed? Yeah, for sure. Because, I, you know, it's kind of like a marriage, right? You deal with somebody enough and you're you're involved with them enough and you spend enough time with them and doing trans I mean, a transaction is a 30 day, 30, 60, 90 day long process. And you do enough transactions with somebody it's like your work spouse you know yeah. you fight with your spouse but you have to know at the end of the day how to calm down and to be able to to have a civil conversation once everybody's cooled off um and i you know a lot of what i do is 
let you vent, let people vent. And then when they're done, I can go back and say, okay, so now where do we stand? Are we at a point where we're irreparable in our relationship? Or is somebody going to apologize, buck up and man up and, you know, admit that they're wrong and then we move forward? You're right. And I appreciate you, Amber. Thank you. I appreciate right, you so, too, Ray. Um, and we're going to wrap it up, Amber. Um, but I really enjoy you have, um, having you on our show. Thank you for having me. And hopefully we can close some more deals. Yep, let's do it. And hopefully you can educate some of the audience on how to become a successful investor. Because there's things, like I say, I didn't know that you've brought light to me. And you've made me a couple extra dollars because I didn't know the answer to something. Mm -hmm. I didn't care to think about it. I didn't care. I wouldn't even worry about it. Yeah. But you, you've brought it to me where it's like, hey, Ray, let's close like this. And I've made five, ten extra thousand dollars. And I thank you for it. I never gave you any of it, but <laughs> no, thank you. No, but that's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Just keep bringing me the deals. Yeah, that's no. all we need to do. And that's what we want to do. I'm bringing in my personal people to actually educate you guys and give you guys the hands-on experience of becoming a successful real estate investor. Yep. Start it off with a conversation and go from there. And, you know, not everybody you talk to is going to be a good fit for you and for your team, and that's okay. And education, especially if you have good people on your side, is always free. We're always willing to educate you so that you can make the max amount of money um, that you need to make. So. And my personal recommendation, Ray Foster, I've been doing this for about 20 years, is – Amber Arnell, Trilogy Escrow, is one of the best escrow officers that I've dealt with in many, many years. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I promise you, she won't let you lose any money. No, she tries not to. <laughs> That's bad for business. <laughs> Nobody needs that. Exactly. So thank you for joining our show. Um, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah, for sure. All right. I'm going to give you a toast. Okay. Cheers. And that's how we roll. Awesome. <laughs>